Well, hey, look, I'm in focus. talk about today is more about the wiring. I didn't go into a whole lot of detail in my wiring video just because I was kind of doing it on the fly. I was learning as I was going and I didn't want to divulge too much information that might have sent you down the wrong path. I wasn't, you know, real 100% sure. And now I think I've got it nailed down as far as the chassis wiring goes. So this one will be more looking into the chassis wiring and then touching on the in-cab wiring because I haven't got to that yet. But that's one of the next steps. So with that said, let's look into what I've kept and what I've cut out. So that way you can kind of compare it to yours. And keep in mind, this is for a 2008 P71. To my understanding, the 05 and up, this will apply to those. I'm not 100% sure. I've never, you know, I haven't looked at an 05 and an 06, but I'm told that they keep, they have the same wiring and all that. If not, that I could be wrong, but it's definitely different than the 04 and back, or so I'm told. So we'll see. But this is what I've kept. Before I talk about that, I found these cool trim rings on Amazon that just kind of spruce up the stock Vic wheel. I kind of dig it. Looks good. And I also got my windshield installed. I went for the clear without a sunshade and without the green tent simply because sitting in this thing, you know, it feels like I'm sitting a little bit high and having the sunshade there um, be a nuisance, having to look under it for, at stoplights and stuff like that. And I, I just like the classic look of the just straight clear. And I'll put a link to these trim rings in the description below. You can get them on Amazon. So in the back, I've cut out the fuel vapor canister and the electronics that go to that. It throws a code but it doesn't affect the way that the truck runs. What I have kept is the fuel pump module. Looks like that. And obviously the fuel pump wiring. There's a ground that comes off that module. You need that for it to run. I kept the inertia switch for the fuel pump. Gonna need that. Basically, that just runs through these little wires up into this mess. And in here, I've kept my OBD2 port, which needs to be grounded, which I grounded there for temporarily. Then I've kept my gauges, which also needs to be ground. It's this pink wire, grounded also temporarily right there. This goes to the brake pedal. This is the brake light switch. This is, these are both coming off that little square connector. I've kept my fuse panel, which I have not depend yet. I, you don't have to, it's just if you want to. Uh, this is the ignition. I covered that in the original wiring video and kind of showed my hand drawing way of it. Now this pink and green and white and green wire, that's your HS can, and we're gonna talk about that here in a second. That's very important. I've kept my, obviously my throttle control. These things are drive-by wire, so you need the wire, <laughs> obviously. And that's pretty much all I've kept in here. OBD2, gauges, throttle wire, brake connector, and brake light switch. Now under the hood, or the, starting where these connectors are, Obviously, I've kept everything for the ECU. There's this purple connector that connects to the main engine harness. I kept the engine harness just the way it was because I knew it worked and didn't want to mess with anything there. From there, I kept the ABS connector. Obviously, my, my mass airflow sensor connector. Over here, I went ahead and left the AC 
connectors because I plan on using that down the road. And then there's a, there's a connection over here near the battery junction box where it connects to the engine harness itself. I also kept brake master cylinder connector there. Then it basically just runs behind and over the battery junction box into the engine harness connections there. Oh, and obviously the fan connector. You need that. And that's pretty much it. There's not a lot to it. Got a couple more bikes done. I think this is my favorite. Black Indian bandit style, black and gold. A red Indian, then an aged Harley board track racer. So for those of you that dig the bikes, there's a quick look. Okay, let's talk about gauges. Um, there's a few ways to go about doing the gauges. Obviously, the easiest way is to use the Crown Vic instrument cluster. I'm not really into that. Um, it, nothing against you if that's what you're doing or the route you plan on taking. Uh, I just don't like the look of them. I'd like to keep the interior as period correct as I can with just you know some older style aftermarket gauges. And that, that brings a few problems. Um, but there are options. There's ways to put aftermarket gauges into these Crown Vicks. Now, the way that the 2005 and up P71s work is that they use basically what's called a CAN bus system. And it's just two little wires. And it's those ones I showed you earlier that are twirled together. It's uh, white and light green and pink and light green. I had originally cut those out on the interior side by accident. I don't know if it was an oversight, but uh, a friend of mine, Jason, uh, that I've gotten to know through this swap uh, online, uh, pointed, pointed out that I cut those out, put them back in, and everything works as it should now. That is basically the backbone of the electronic system of these cars. All, a lot of data is sent through those two little wires, including all your data for the uh, speedometer, tachometer, and water temp. Now I've got a schematic here and let's take a look at it and I'll try to break this down as far as how to make the gauges, aftermarket gauges work in the Crown Vic. Now this is the schematic for the gauge cluster and hopefully you, you can see this. The, it's very small writing. This is from the Mitchell diagrams. I like those better than the Ford diagrams because I can print them out, make notes on them, change things up, and if I'm wrong, I print out another one and do it the right way. Also, they've got a lot more info than the Ford manuals do. And they're very detailed. They work out nicely. So here is what we're looking at for, okay, here's oil pressure. And this is just a single wire because, like I said, it's just a warning light rather than, you know, a gauge. Uh, brake indicator, no big deal. Washer level, no big deal. You know, just some of this police stuff and whatnot. Then we get down to, obviously, oh, another thing. There's that pink wire, the logic ground. You need to ground that out. And we get down here. Here is the fuel, the fuel level and the fuel level return. And these work off of a 15 to 160 ohm reading. So as long as you can find a fuel gauge that operates in that ohm range, then that's fine. That's not a problem. But here's the here's the CAN bus system. It's these two wires. And these two are the ones that run the speedometer, tachometer, and water temp, as well as a ton of other things. Now like I was saying, there are options as to what you can do for aftermarket gauges. One of them is speedhut.com. And they're pretty neat because you can customize your own gauges and make the gauges look the way you want to. I got a pretty cool vintage look using their customization for a water temp gauge. I'll show it here. It's pretty slick. Um, that's one way to go. The, basically the way that their gauges work is they work off of the CAN bus system where you plug the gauges into the OBD2 port and from there it computes it all and, and shows it on display. So you can have your speedo, your tack, and your water temp I'm not 100% sure that we can even get a oil pressure gauge on one of these. 
because the way that the P-71 system works is it's a low oil pressure warning light rather than an oil pressure signal. So I don't think we can get one of those. Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, because that would be kind of cool to have that. But that's one option. Uh, another one is this uh, right here, this Dakota Digital OBD2 Speedo TAC interface system. One thing I like about it, you can run any aftermarket digital gauge you want. You're not pigeonholed into using the speedhut.com brand. You can run any digital aftermarket gauge, and I plan on running these. So this is the way I, I think I'm, I'm going to go about it because you can plug your speedo and tack info there. Another thing I like about it is it has a cruise control system in it. So, so you can buy their cruise control system and it's pretty seamless in how it all hooks up and how it works, which I plan to do a lot of road tripping in this thing and I'd like to have cruise control. But the only downside to going that route is there is no water temp output on that. I'm not sure why, but there isn't. So I would have to look at going some other aftermarket way of just pulling a signal directly off of the temperature probe off the motor and having that display on the same style of gauge. Just need to figure out the ohm range and how that works, which I'm getting, I'm working on that. It's just not, not a lot of info, not a lot of people doing this to the uh, P71's aftermarket water temp gauges. But as soon as I do find out, I'll be sure to put that in the info below. So I hope that helped clear a little bit up about how gauge system works. Like I said, if you're just going to use the Vic gauges, then don't need to worry about any of this. So as always, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for the comments. Um, thanks for the questions. It helps because that way, you know, the questions that I get several of, the same of, I can do a video and kind of cover that and it makes the world a better place. So anyway, see you next time.